Hi, today on the Ambient iPad, we're going to take a look at Audio Damage's Adverb 2 Reverb app. So I've got an instance of 8 Matrix open. Let's start with drums because those are a good way to demonstrate some of the capabilities of a reverb, and then we'll add some other additional instruments. So I'll go to one of my favorites, the AudioKit Analog 909 audio unit. Let's just quickly create a drum pattern that we can use here. So yeah, we're on 80 tempo. That works for me. Uh, let's do something different here. Let's skip that. I'll get it. I have something in mind. Now we need a rim shot. Okay, let's get some hi hats going. Okay, that, that'll work. A little syncopated. That'll help us with our reverb. All right, let's just add adverb two. Just pick a preset here to start with. Uh, I like Mr. Smooth. We'll tweak that. Now we need to. Uh, I'm a little kind of big for that. Have a good start. Either way, with drums, drums <laughs> really, really help with reverb because it just sounds so big. In a mix, it wouldn't be like this, but I, I always find that reverb on drums always sounds larger than I want to. Uh, so you, you, you really do have to tweak. Uh, we could do a small drum plate. Okay, that's okay. That gives you that. Uh, that gives you that early '80s Peter Gabriel. Phil Collins gated drum sound. All right, let's just have this going in the background. I'll kind of walk through all the settings here. Okay, so first pre-delay. Pre-delay pre simply is the amount of time that it takes for the sound to hit the reverb engine. So you will get unprocessed sound for a series of milliseconds until it hits the reverb. So just makes it sound a little bigger, really more of an echo, but it does impact the largeness of the reverb. Let's put that back down. Reverb time is simply the amount of time that it takes the reverberated sound to fade out. So it again, another knob that helps you control the size of the reverb. really does make the room sound smaller or larger. Let's jack that up, change the pre-delay, adds that little bit of slap back to it. All right, let's get those down. And then the size controls the size of the room. So if we use that and the reverb time, that's where you get Pre-delay, more pre-delay. All right. So those are all pretty straightforward. They all impact the largeness of the reverb in one way or another. So if you move, move along to the buttons on the right, well, we start with diffusion, which is essentially how much the sound is diffused or spread apart um, as it recirculates. 
it's often hard to hear, but it, it really impacts the tails. I'm going to jack this stuff up a bit to see if we can hear. Right now it's on medium. It's really, if you listen, I'm not sure you can hear it through the, re, the YouTube compression, particularly between the low and then the high. Just the... the the tails of the reverb are just a little more complex. Let's put it back to medium. Jack these down a little. Then we move on to the reverb time contour, and this impacts a specific frequency on the low end, 100 hertz, and on the high end, the 10 hertz. So right now it's set uh, for both to uh, essentially roll those off. If we start with the bass side, the 100 hertz, go to flat. So you can hear a little more low end in the reverb, and then even even more. Let's put that back to low. Same on the high end at the 10 hertz. Right now it's rolled off all the way. So it's not flat, it's still rolled off, and you can hear a little crisper on the high end, and then even more so. Let's get that back down to low. All right, and then finally the roll off. Similar in principle to the contour, but it impacts a lot more different frequencies. So th this is really if you're looking for making the tails of the reverb either darker or brighter, this is the easiest way to do it. Let's start with low. So low roll off, slightly darker, and then even more so. And this only impacts the frequencies in the reverb itself, not, not the direct sound. Just keep this on medium. Then we move over to kind of the, the mix, the input. Uh, these are pretty straightforward. This is the input level of the uh, instrument against the reverb. So down there, we're sending no instrument into the reverb. There, it's completely going into the reverb. And you can mute it that way. So reverb isn't having an impact it usually seems to be kept up to 10 you don't have to uh, and i do that because then the output mix is really think of this as a wet dry mix again yeah you can stop the reverb itself from the output or you can just use the slider to go from dry to completely wet for most purposes, I'm, I'm kind of usually in between the three and the five, and we'll do the average of that and stay in the four, or the median. That's actually a nice sound. Um, if we, we layer some other instruments, we're actually going to lose a lot of that reverb sound. And that's why when you're mixing or, or recording a lot of times, depending on the instrument, you, you'll have to kind of experiment with this. but. You may need to use more reverb than you think you do because once you add other instruments in, it's going to mask the reverb. So this is a this is a pretty standard setting that I would start with for a lot of drums, but when I add other instruments, it almost sounds like there are no reverb on the drums. So experiment around with that. You'll 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 see what I'm talking about. Let's add some other instruments so we can fiddle even more with the reverb and see some of the sounds we can get. So, let's pick an instrument here. Something basic. Uh, something I haven't used yet in a video. Now let's do Xeon. I haven't used this app that much, so I'm not too familiar with it, but I'll just pick a preset. And then we'll uh, use some Rosetta sequencers to actually make a line here. Let me just go in. Uh, let's just pick a bass sound. Let's start with SH Fat. Let's go to Ruiz Maker, Rosetta. Let's do bass line just to get a bass line going. And you know what? We're just going to go random here. Uh, let's do D minor. According to Nigel Tufnell, the most saddest of all keys, and let's generate. Okay, so we've got a bass line there. We need to connect that to Xeon. There we go. Okay, pretty basic. Let's turn off the drums for a second. 
That's a dry sound. So let's add the reverb to it. Okay, let's tweak the reverb. I don't like that at all. But it's not, I don't like it at all, but it's not really the reverb sound I'm looking for. Sounds like a nice large room, but let me play through these so you can hear the impact. So again, makes it sound bigger, but it's more kind of reminds me of a slapback echo edition in a sense. I'm actually going to keep that off the reverb time. So this is. Change the size of the room. And of course, you, know, you can get glitchy and all that by playing with these in real time. Uh, Adverb 2 does respond to MIDI messages, uh, so there is actually a lot you can do and use it as a creative effect. I am not demonstrating any of that right now. This is just strictly using it as a kind of traditional reverb. So you can hear it's not only bigger, but there's almost a delay on those tails. That's from the reverb time. Let's jack it up all the way. Even bigger. Let's bring that down. Make the room slightly smaller. Let's add a little pre-delay. Okay, um, so that sounds pretty good to me. Um, there's, believe me, there's more I would normally do, but in the interest of time. Now, if we add the drums back in, I'm curious, because a lot of times, so this sounds like way too much reverb for drums, and we're in the same instance. So the drums sound bigger than the original uh, settings we were using, but really not that much. Now the good thing in 8 Matrix is that I can just click on the, the red dot here that goes up uh, in the Matrix to Adverb and just bring down the volume. What this is doing is bringing down how much volume, how much of the effect is going uh, out of the reverb. So I could turn that all the way down. Sounds dry and a little here. And you know what? Let's solo that to hear what that sounds like. Sounds pretty dry. Oh. <laughs> I, I should know this because I make this mistake all the time. When you when you're in eight matrix and you and you hit solo, it, it just solos the instrument. So it's cut everything else out, including the adverb. I need to solo adverb too. There we go. So a little more reverb than I would normally use, but this won't be in isolation. If we add everything else back, it's gonna cancel out some of that reverb. So I like that. Not bad. Okay, let's add some kind of generative lead line over that. Uh, you know what we'll use again? Let's use something we haven't used before. And it's kind of let's use mere sing. just going to use a preset here and we're just going to quickly do this. Let's get another Reese Maker going here. Uh, let's use particles. Nah, actually I didn't want to use particles. I want to use Collider. So let's swap Collider. This is a fun app. We'll do a video just on this at some point because it's so freaking fun. All right, and as usual, I'm going to move this stuff around because I always forget to go to the mini matrix. So we're going to have that. There we go. So Mary saying is very good for bell like sounds. Um, I, I just, Ice Gear, I think Ice Gear, they, they see Ice Works is another name I see for this company, but they, they have a lot of very cool apps that are. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to D minor and then we'll generate. I always
feels like more hadrons. The grid size is fine. Again, just a sample sound, not necessarily the best sound for this, but let's solo this. And we'll solo adverb. That's too busy for this piece. So um, let's go clock division to one eighth, eighth notes. Okay, that's 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 okay. Alright, now let's add. So we just added the reverb. Turn it off so you can hear the difference. Nice. To really, really add some depth and space to it. Very good for this wintry time of year. Let's get everything in now. As you can hear, you know, single staccato notes always bring out reverb more than more denser things. That's why the the, um, the bass line really sounds like it has the most reverb. And I'm going to tone that down slightly because what I actually want to do is go in here and jack this a little for that melody line. Okay, let's do some leveling here. Actually, the levels aren't that bad. Even. any of this is coming through YouTube with the uh, compression that YouTube puts on everything, uh, but I, it did take away a little bit of that brittleness. All right, so there you go. Not really sure what else to say. <laughs> Just let this piece play out. So there you go. That's audio damage, adverb two, nice little plate reverb app. Um, even when it's not on sale, it's fairly inexpensive. And if you want to explore plate, re plate reverb a bit, um, I, I really highly recommend this app. And we'll fade out with the tune going. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your music, and uh, we'll, we'll talk soon.